Hey guys, this is Eskimo Poodle, <coughs> and we are here to start our new Let's Play series, Pokemon Leaf Green on the Game Boy Advance. This is a remake of the original Pokemon games that were uh, red and blue that were released on the Game Boy back in, what, 95 or 94 or something like that? 96 maybe? And yeah, they're, this and Fire Red are remakes of those particular games. In Japan, they were released as... The original games were released as Pokemon Green and Pokemon Red. Whereas in the US, it was... It was Pokemon Blue and Pokemon Red for whatever reason. I don't know why they skipped out on Green, but oh well. Yeah, so we got Leaf Green and Fire Red instead of like Aqua Blue and Fire Red, which is fine. And for those who don't know anything about Pokemon, like at all, you catch these little monsters here. They're Pokemon, short for Pocket Monsters, and you basically dogfight them. So there you go. Let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, I'm going to skip all this stuff, because this stuff does not really matter here. In the world which you are about to enter, you will embark on a grand adventure with you as a hero. Speak to people and check things wherever you go, be it towns, roads, or caves. Gather information and hints from every source. New paths will open to you by helping people in need, overcoming challenges, and solving mysteries. At times, you'll be challenged by others and attacked by wild creatures. Be brave and keep pushing on. Through your adventure, we hope that you will interact with all sorts of people and achieve personal growth. That is our biggest objective. Press the A button and let your adventure begin. Alright. So yeah, uh, you fight these critters called Pokemon, short for Pocket Monsters, and you capture them, and then you fight them with other people that own them, or just wild versions of them. You, you yourself as a trainer don't gain experience and level up and stuff like that, but your monsters do. So it's pretty simple stuff, and we'll get through it as we go. The the fire red and leaf green versions made some improvements over the original, obviously. Hello there, glad to meet you. Welcome to the world of Pokemon. My name is Oak. People affectionately refer to me as the Pokemon Professor. This world is inhabited far and wide by creatures called Pokemon. For some people, Pokemon are pets. Others use them for battling. As for myself, I study Pokemon as a profession. But first, tell me a little about yourself. Now tell me, are you a boy or are you a girl? Yeah, in the original versions of the game, you didn't have a choice. You were automatically a boy. I think you were able to finally play as a girl in... I want to say Pokemon Crystal, which is the second generation of games. By the way, if, if, if I ever refer to something as a generation or first gen or something like that, first gen would be Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, which was kind of a sequel enhanced version of Pokemon Red and Blue. Uh, gen 2 would be Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Gen 3 would be Emerald, Sapphire, and Ruby, as well as Fire Red and Leaf Green. Gen 4 would be Diamond, Pearl, Platinum. And I forget if Omega, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire are in 5. I think they are. So yeah, so if I refer to Gen 1, 2, 3, 4, it's basically referring to the release, the release group for the most part of the games here. But we're going to be a boy since I'm a boy. I'm not a girl. Sorry. Let's begin with your name. What is it? Well, my name is going to be Poodle. And I'm going to go ahead and keep my name as all caps because everything else in this game, all the monsters and trainers, they all have their names in all caps, so it's going to look weird if I don't have my name in all caps. So, let's go. Alright, so your name is Poodle. Yes, indeedy. This is my grandson. He's been your rival since you both were babies. Um, what was his name again? Yeah, yeah, good job. Oh, you don't remember your grandson's name. We could give him a generic name like Red or probably Gary would work out pretty good. But I'm going to give him the ceremonial name that I've given to all my rivals in all Pokemon games. And there we go. Loser. Because he's always going to lose. Or was it Loser? 
Yes, indeedy. That's right. I remember now. His name is Loser. Poodle. Your very own Pokemon Legend is about to unfold. A world of dreams and adventures of Pokemon awaits. Let's go. Alright, so we start off in our room here. And immediately we have a game system to check out. With the NES. Okay, it's time to go. It's an older system, but hey, it works. Immediately I'm going to go to options and switch the tech speed to fast because that makes life much better. Um, we could change the frame here a little bit just to make it look a little different. Uh, let's see. I think I'm going to go with blue. Yeah, that makes everything look all nice and awesome here. And we got our bag with items, key items, Pokeballs. That's going to be the stuff that we use to capture the monsters with. And that's it. Eventually, uh, later games will refine that system a little more here. And let's go to our computer here. And at this particular computer, we can access our item storage. And we have stored away a potion for rainy days. Yay! We got ourselves a free potion that will restore 20 HP to one of our monsters there. So that's very nice. In the original games, red, blue, and yellow, and possibly gold, silver, and crystal, you had a... I think it might have just been red, red, blue, and yellow. You had a 20 item limit in your inventory, and for the longest time, I had no idea that you could store items in the PC like that. I had no idea. And because in the original games, everything was just kind of mushed together in one pocket, I threw away a ton of stuff like TMs and other stuff that I just didn't have room for. It might have been more than 20 items, but I think it was like 20 or 30 items. Anyways, let's talk to our mom. Right. Oh, boys leave home someday. It said so on TV. Oh, yes. Professor Oak next door was looking for you. Okay. Four boys are walking on railroad tracks. I better go too. That kind of reminds me of the movie based on that Stephen King novel, um... I forget what it's called, but... You know, where they find the dead body on the train tracks or whatever. Eh, oh well. Anyways, we are here in Pallet Town, the starting little town here. That's our house, and this is our rival's house, Loser. What do we got? Hi, Poodle. My brother, Loser, is out at Grandpa's lab. Okay. Uh, what do you got there? It's a big map of the Kanto region. Now this, now this would be useful. Also, you, a lot of houses have... Well, I thought that one was. But a lot of houses or buildings have town maps that you can check out. And... Hello, town. Shades of your journey away. And just use that map right there. Trainer tips. Press start to open the menu. Okay. They're starting us off simple. Fair enough. Signs are useful, aren't they? And this chubby guy down here. Technology is incredible. You can now store and recall items in Pokemon as data via PC. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And this is Oak Pokemon Research Lab. What do we got going on here? They said Loser was hanging out here. I study Pokemon as Professor Oak's aide. Professor Oak may not look like much, but he's the authority on Pokemon. Many Pokemon trainers hold him in high regard. I studied Pokemon as Professor Oak's aide. We're going to see these aides throughout the game. But for now, they're just going to be there. The save option is on the menu. Use it regularly. I will. Press start to open the menu. Okay. What? It's only Poodle? Gramps isn't around. What are these? These are Pokeballs. They contain Pokemon. Uh, you'll be seeing this particular sprite, this little Pokeball sprite, on the overworld map because they will contain items. I don't know why items are in Pokeballs instead of like other stuff like chests or whatever, but there you go. And when you pick up the items, you do not get an extra Pokeball out of it. You just get the item. I mean, yeah, that, that actually be a pretty cool little feature is they hold the items, yeah, sure, but then once you take the item out, you get an extra, you get an extra catching item out of it, but they don't do that. Anyways, Professor Oak is not around the town, so you know what? Screw him. Let's just go out here and start our adventure on our own. Hey, wait. Don't go out. 
It's unsafe. Wild Pokemon live in tall grass. You need your own Pokemon for your protection. I know. Here, come with me. I don't know where this guy was hiding since, you know, we didn't see him in the house or anywhere else. Gramps, I'm fed up with waiting. Loser, let me think. Oh, that's right. I told you to come. Just wait. Here, Poodle. There are three Pokemon here. Ha <laughs> ha. The Pokemon are held inside these Pokeballs. When I was young, I was a serious Pokemon trainer. But now, in my old age, I only have these three left. You can have one. Go on. Choose. Hey, Gramps, no fair. What about me? Be patient, loser. You can have one, too. Heh, I don't need to be greedy like you. I'm mature. Go ahead and choose, Poodle. Now, Poodle. Okay, so you're going to say the same thing. Okay, fair enough. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save right here. There's no... I like to... Well, we'll get, into, we'll get into why I'm saving momentarily, but let's go ahead and look at the Pokemon we got here. We got Bulbasaur. It's very easy to raise. Do you want to go with the Grass Pokemon Bulbasaur? No, I do not. We have Squirtle. It's one worth raising. We're not going to go with the Water Pokemon Squirtle. And we have... You should raise it patiently. Charmander. You're claiming the Fire Pokemon. Charmander. No. Okay, so in this game, in case, again, you don't know anything about Pokemon... There's basically a giant rock, paper, scissors thing going on here. There's 17 types, including... Let's see if I, let's see if I can list them all, As a, uh, starting with this game here. Normal, fire, water, grass, ice, bug, poison, psychic, dark, steel, ground, rock, fighting, flying... Um, electric, psychic... And those are the ones that I remember. I might have missed a couple there. But yeah, they all have various weaknesses and resist resistances. For example, Bulbasaur is a grass poison type. Being grass type, he is weak to fire type. Charmander, being a fire type, is weak to the water type. Squirtle, being a water type, is weak to the grass type here. So it's basically a giant rock, paper, scissors game. It Okay, let's let's take an example of something like a Geodude, which we're going to see eventually. He has rock and ground type. He is weak to water from his ground type, and also weak to water from his rock type. Now, if he was just a pure rock type, he would take double damage from water types. But because he has two types that are weak to water, he takes quadruple damage. On the other hand, though, let's say he was rock steel type. He would be only taking a quarter damage from something like a normal attack because that would be resisted by both of his types right there. So you'll get in. We'll get into all the types as we go, but let's just for now just leave it at that. Anyways, I am going to go ahead and choose Squirtle as my type here. He is actually before we get too far let me actually go over how these pokemon differ stats wise bulbasaur is very balanced he has acceptable attack and pretty good defense and special stats including special defense his speed is pretty okay he's just very average all around squirtle he focuses slightly more on defense with higher defense and special defense than the other two and again his speed is about the same as bulbasaur's for the most part and his offenses are eh, acceptable. And Charmander, he focuses more on speed and attack. And his defenses are slightly lower than the other two's, but eh, not really that much. We're going to go ahead with Squirtle here. Okay, let's get Squirtle and... We can give nicknames to these guys, so let's call him... Hmm. Not sure what to call you, actually. Let's go with... I don't know, actually. Hmm. Let's call you... Oh, I have the wrong button there. Okay, let's go with... 
Tip Top. There you go. He's one of my better racers in Diddy Kong Racing. Loser. I'll take this one then. Loser received the Bulbasaur from Professor Oak. Yeah, the thing, the reason why he wanted to go second is so he could choose the Pokemon that has the type advantage over you. Let's go ahead and look at our Squirtle real fast here. Tip Top, she has a uh, relaxed nature. Uh, there are natures in this game. They were not in Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow, Gold, Silver, or Crystal. Natures determine your stats to a small degree. What they do is they raise one nature by or one attack or one stat by 10% and lower the other stat or another stat by 10%. So, for example, uh, let's see here, relaxed. Relaxed does defense up by 10% and speed down by 10%. So that's not bad for a Squirtle, because he he already has high defense, but I am kind of picky about my natures, so I'm going to reset until I get a nature that I care for. I, I mean, you don't, ha you don't have to do this in the main game, but I tend to try to get at least natures that don't have any effect at all, or that raise, like, attack or speed or something like that, depending on if it's a special attacker or a physical attacker. So let me go ahead and just grab a better Squirtle real fast, and I'll be right back. Okay, I got a slightly better Squirtle on my second try, so let's go ahead and check him out here. He has a bashful nature. That does not affect your stats in any way. Actually, from what I've heard, the natures that don't affect your stats, apparently what it does is it raises and lowers the same attack, or the, the, same, the same stat by 10%. I don't know if that's true or not, but bashful is one of those natures that has no negative or positive effect on any of your stats, so that'll be fine. Our defense is slightly lower than what the other tur the other Squirtle had, but you know what? We'll live with that. Okay, we got ourselves our, our tipped up here. And, by the way, if you look at the, the menu here, you see that we have six slots for Pokemon. You can carry six Pokemon with you at a time, and any that you catch beyond that will go to a PC that you can interact with them and change them around to your party right there. So, let's go ahead and... See what Oak has to say about it. If a wild Pokemon appears, your Pokemon can battle it. With it, with it at your side, you should be able to reach the next town. Okay. My Pokemon looks a lot tougher than yours. Alright, let's just go ahead and get out of here. Wait, Poodle, let's check out our Pokemon. Come on, I'll take you on. And we get into a battle right away here. Something about your arrival you'll notice is he's kind of impatient. Not as much as some of the other games, but pretty impatient. He would like to battle. He sets out Bulbasaur. Alright, these are those uh, fights we've been talking about. Oh, for Pete's sake. So pushy as always. Poodle, you've never had a Pokemon battle before, have you? A Pokemon battle is when trainers put, pit their Pokemon against each other. The trainer that makes the other trainer's Pokemon faint by lowering their HP to zero wins. But rather than talking about it, you'll learn more from experience. Try battling and see for yourself. Okay. So we have our moves here. Tackle and Tail Whip. They're both normal types. So that means... The thing about normal types is they're not effective or ineffective against very many types. They're not super effective on any types, but they are not very effective on some types. Inflicting damage on the foes is a, way to, is a key to any battle. Okay, so let's just go ahead and keep on tackling here. And you don't really have a whole lot of options. You could go ahead and Tail Whip to lower the defense, but Bulbasaur might growl at you to lower your attack stat or something like that. And, well, it would just basically end up in a stalemate for a little while. And you got a critical hit on me. That's not good. By the way, you may have noticed that we have been going at the... It's important to get to know your Pokemon thoroughly. This is a list of your Pokemon, Poodle. Open this to check the skills and moves of your Pokemon. You can also check Pokemon here if you want to use an item on one. That's what I was trying to do. You may have noticed that we have been going... Sometimes... Sometimes... Okay, keep your eyes on your Pokemon's HP. It will faint if the HP drops to zero. Go away, you geezer. Yeah, you'll notice that sometimes... 
Tip Tip will go first, and other times Bulbasaur will go first. In that case, that means both the Pokemon have the same speed, and that's referred to as a speed tie, and basically it does an invisible coin flip to decide who's actually going to get that first attack off right there. So there we go. We win the battle, we get 67 experience points, and that's enough to get to level 6. And we get some stuff for defense, some HP, and a little bit of everything else. Very nice. See, like I said, Squirtle has slightly higher defensive stats than the other Pokemon here. What? Unbelievable. I picked the wrong Pokemon. Yeah, we get 80 Poke Dollars, or Poke Yen, but I'm gonna call them Poke Dollars. Hmm, excellent. If you win, you earn prize money and your Pokemon will grow. Battle other trainers and make your Pokemon strong. Okay, cool. Okay, I'll make my Pokemon battle to toughen it up. Gramps, Poodle, spell you later. Uh, hey Oak, what are you gonna do with this guy right here? That's Professor Oak's last Pokemon. He's just gonna sit there. Raise your young Pokemon by making a battle. It has to battle for it to grow. Okay. Let's just go ahead and get out of here. Matter of fact, let's go talk to our mom and tell her that we're leaving. I don't think we were actually healed up after that battle. Oh, by the way, something about moves that you should know is... Oh yeah, we were actually healed up after that battle. Where it says PP... That's basically like your individual mana for each move. It stands for, I think it stands for point power or something like that. But just PP for short. It's basically how many times you can use that particular move. So tackle, we can use it 35 times before we have to rest at a Pokemon Center, which heals up our health and PP for moves. And Tail Whip has 30. Stronger moves have less PP with... They're increments of 5. There's moves with 5, 10, 20, 30, 35, possibly 15. Yeah, there are just plenty of moves. And we're going to be getting into a fair amount of them. Poodle, you should take a quick rest. Every time you talk to your mom here, you'll take a quick rest, and your Pokemon's HP and PP will be restored, and you'll be good to go. So let's just go ahead and... Well, head on out first. We don't have any... We don't have anything to catch the wild Pokemon with, unfortunately, but oh well. Let's just go ahead and see what we got here. Pilot Town to Viridian City. Okay. Let's go. Oh, yeah, we're going to Pokemon Mart. It's part of a convenient chain selling all sorts of items. Please visit us in Viridian City. I know. I'll give you a sample. Here you go. And we get ourselves another free potion, which, if I didn't mention it, they restore 20 HP to one Pokemon. And we get to fight ourselves a Rattata, which is one of the basic Pokemon in this route. Uh, routes typically have anywhere from well, anywhere from one to like a bunch of wild Pokemon that will appear on it, and they will appear in various levels, like a certain level range. Like I think here on this route, they'll be from like level two to like level five or something like that. And we still get experience out of it, so that works. We can't capture these guys just yet, so we're not going to go over them just yet here. And another Rattata. Yeah, so level 2 is the lowest it can get in the wild. You cannot find level 1 Pokemon in the wild for whatever reason. I mean, I don't know why, but okay. And he is trying to lower our defense there with Tail Whip. Now, with moves that either raise or lower a stat... You can... They can be applied successfully six times. And that is the maximum times you can raise a, raise a single stat or lower a single stat. And we were in Bubble, which is our Water-type move here. And let's go ahead and... We'll talk to this kid first. Or not, okay. And we got a Pidgey. He's a, he's a flying Normal-type. For some reason, Flying always has a secondary type, and it's been that way until, I think, Gen 5. Now, if you press Select, or Start, uh, which one is it? No, you can't, okay. Yeah, I think you have to do it in the screen. You can move your moves around, so if I, you want Bubble up front to have it available for use, you can do that, but oh well. Um, what was I going to say? I don't know what I was going to say here. Okay, let's go ahead with Bubble. Let's put that right there. There we go. 
And yeah, Bubble has weaker base power, but because you get a bonus because being the same type, I, which is referred to as stab, same type attack bonus. If you're the same type, if your Pokemon is the same type as the move it's using, you get a, I think, 50% increase to that move's power. Oh yeah, that's what I was going to do. Uh, I'll be right back. Hang on. Okay, so with moves that raise or lower attacks, uh, let's go ahead. So at at no boosts, you start out at just like stat value one. With one boost, it goes up to 1.5 times. At two, it goes to times two. At three, it goes to times 2.5. At four, it goes to times three. At five, it goes to times 3.5. And at six, which is the max, it goes to times four for positive boosts. And then for negative boosts, uh, minus one is 66% of the original value. Minus two is 50%. Minus three is 40%. Minus four is 33%. Minus five is 28.5%. And minus six at the very lowest is your stat will be 25% of its original value. That's for stuff like HP, Attack, Defense, Special Attack, Special Defense, and Speed. There's also two hidden stats that you don't see, Accuracy and Evasion, and those are slightly, slightly different. Uh, let's see, Accuracy goes up by roughly 30% for every positive level, capping out at Accuracy times 3 at level 6, and at... 30% for minus 6 and evasion is basically the same thing so okay there we go that's what I wanted to say right there a lot of times though people will not really bother with those things unless they're going for a specific moveset see those ledges along the road it's a bit scary but you can jump from them you can get back to Palatine quicker that way okay fair enough but yeah uh a lot of times people will just ignore the various stat moves because, well, rather just do damaging moves for the most part, at least I would. I mean, there are moves that raise your stats, more, that raise or lower stats by more than the one level at a time. Like, for example, Tail Whip and Leer, they both lower your defense by one level. But there's also a move called Screech, which will lower a defense by two levels at once. So you can get you get all six stages of deleveling the stats in three turns, as opposed to six. So those are kind of useful. But for the most part, I don't really bother with them that much. Let's go ahead and heal up, since why not? Yeah, Pokemon Centers here, they are free, and they will do the same thing that your mom does, except it takes a little longer depending on how many Pokemon you have, because they'll insert each ball individually in the machine. Not individually, like one at a time, you heal them one at a time. It just goes through the animation of putting them each into the little machine right there. Okay, now that we're at a non-home PC, we can access these PCs, and we have someone's PC and Poodle's PC. Someone's PC is where you access your Pokemon that you deal with and Poodle's PC is where you can store items if you need to and mailbox that's a useless feature I'm not even gonna bother with it please feel free to use that PC in the corner the receptionist told me so it's still kind of her there's a Pokemon Center in every town ahead they charge no money so don't be shy about healing Pokemon Pokemon Centers heal your tired hurt or faded Pokemon they make all Pokemon completely healthy yet yeah, when I was little, I had a strategy guide for this game, and for the Pokemon Center, it said, Rare is the game that lets you heal your party for free, so take advantage of it. And for some reason, I thought that Rare was like the company that made the Pokemon games, and I was like, okay, so this game, Rare, they let you heal your characters for free. And I didn't I didn't meet I didn't get that they were saying it's a rare game that lets you heal for free. I, I just misread that completely. You want to know about the two kinds of Caterpillar Pokemon? Sure, why not? Caterpie has no poison, but Weedle does. Watch that your Pokemon aren't stabbed by Weedle's poison sting. Okay, fair enough. 
Uh, let's see. We could explore more here, but let's just check out the mart real fast. Hey, you come from Pellet Town? You know Professor Oak, right? His order came in. Can I get you to take it to him? Here we receive Oak's parcel. And that's a key item. There we go. I've got to buy some potions. You never know when your Pokemon will need quick healing. Yeah, that's true. This shop does good business in antidotes, I've heard. Yeah, that's because the Weedles will poison you. Okay, thanks. Please say hi to Professor Oak for me, too. Uh, I don't think you can actually buy anything until you deliver it, but maybe you can. Let me see. Yeah, you have to you have to deliver this to Professor Oak before you can actually buy anything, so let's go do that real fast. And you know what? Let's go ahead and take the shortcuts here, a.k.a. these little ledges, because that'll make life easy. By the way, I'm not going to be this slow in all videos for this game. I'm just trying to explain stuff at the front, I guess. But we'll have more faster-paced videos for the most part. And let's see, are we going to get in a battle there? No. By the way, you can, always, you can always check how much experience your Pokemon needs to the next level just by the summary there. And it's pretty easy to tell, so we need 25 experience. Awesome. By the way, if you ever see a slight speed up in the game, that's because the Y button on my Xbox controller here, uh, it's the fast forward function, and it, I keep pressing it instead of opening the menu by accident, so I try, I try to avoid that for the most part here, but sometimes I just forget what button is what. Oh, Poodle, how's my old Pokemon? Well, it seems to be growing more attached to you. You must be talented as a Pokemon trainer. What's that? You have something for me? Yeah, we deliver this parcel. Very nice. Ah, it's a custom Pokeball. I had it on order. Thank you. Ramps. I almost forgot. What did you call me for? Oh, right. I have a request for you two. On the desk there is my invention, the Pokedex. It automatically records data on Pokemon you've seen or caught. It's a high-tech encyclopedia. Poodle and Loser, take these with you. And we receive, we receive our Pokedex here. You can't get detailed data on Pokemon just by seeing them. You must catch them to obtain complete data. So here are some tools for catching wild Pokemon. And we receive five, five Pokeballs. These are the basic uh, capturing devices of the game. When a wild Pokemon appears, it's fair game. Just throw a Pokeball at it and try to catch it. This won't always work, however. A healthy Pokemon can escape. You have to be lucky. Make a complete guide on all the Pokemon in the world. That was my dream. But I'm too old. I can't get the job done. So I want you two to fulfill my dream for me. Get moving, you two. This is a great undertaking in Pokemon history. Alright, Gramps. Leave it, to all, leave it all to me. Poodle, I hate to say it, but you won't be necessary for this. I know. I'll borrow a town map from my sis. I'll tell her not to lend you one, Poodle. <laughs> Don't bother coming around to my place after this. Okay, so we've got our starter Pokemon, we've got our Pokédex, and we've got balls. We're going to go ahead and start capturing Pokemon next time. So guys, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys then. Have a good night.